Okay, so we just talked about the variable method, which is bindable to anything because you have the flexibility and what it can be used for. Now let's talk about the template that you want to use when you do know what you're going to use it for. So when you have a specific thing that you're trying to make, like an object, you know, a motor, a valve, a compressor, that you want to use indirect linking on. Indirect binding, what indirect binding does is create templates that point indirectly to a set of tags based on a simple parameter, like an integer or a string. Indirect linking makes it possible to have one template for all of your motors. So let's, let's, for example, let's say you have a template for all your motors in your enterprise. You've got 200 motors right now, and you need to add motor 201. In ignition, you have to add you know, four tags to, to make this happen. You can have the HOA tag, the AMPS tag, the run command tag, and the status tag in order for you to, to, to display that motor on the screen. If you put your data in a consistent hierarchy with the, the same four tags in each folder, then you don't have to go in in and uh, you know use those and, and bring those tags on the screen every time. You can simply use a template for all your motors and you can use a parameter to point to a set of those tags. So instead of creating 200 screens or 200 identical motors, you can save a lot of time by having one template for all of them. You uh, Making a template that knows it is always going to be used for a motor. So as I said, indirect template knows what you're going to use it for. That's because within the template you're indicating that the data is looking at a at a uh, location somewhere in a particular data structure, and that structure is determined by the template's parameter. You can only use indirection when your data is structured in a consistent way. You have to build the data structure in such a way that when you add a new motor, your template will point to the tags in the new motor, thus giving you the ability to change a template by substituting part of the path with a variable. This only works if every motor has the exact same tags, set of tags as well. So rather than talking about that, let's show an example of how this will work. Uh, it's much easier to see um, why we create indirect templates um, you know, in, in the designer versus uh, just talking about it. So if you look over here, I've got a motors folder, and I've got four motors. Every motor is identical in that they have same four tags, amps, HOA, run, command, and status. Well, the only difference between each of these tags is, of course, you know, which motor it's going to point to in the PLC. So I've created all the tags in addition, but I've organized them to a very nice hierarchy where the only difference between the paths are this motor name, M1, M2, M3 and M4. So within each folder, I've made sure that I've named all the tags exactly the same. So I can then create a template that knows about this structure that where I can indirectly point to one of these different folders by the parameter. Let's go over here to our templates. Let's create a new one in the indirect area. I'm going to call this motor. And again, the first thing we're doing is going to add a parameter because, again, it's parameterized. So I'm going to go to the custom properties. I'm going to add one called motor name. And I'm going to make this a simple type, a string, so that I can put M1 or M2, and I can point to one of these folders. So now let's, let's actually put a little motor graphic in place. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to find a motor. Say I like that motor there. And uh, I want to put just a simple LED on the window as well. So we'll keep it a very simple um, template. And I'm going to make the, I want to change, I want to actually color that motor based on, this, on the HOA. So I'm going to bind the fill paint now to indirect tag. And the indirect tag, I'm going to go find a tag by default, so motor M1 uh, HOA. And the part I'm going to change or substitute is this M1. Remove that part and link it to the motor name of the template. So I'm, I, that's going to drive which of those, those folders I'm going to be looking at. Then, of course, I can put my number to color translation. So if it's 0, I'm going to do red. And if it's uh, 1, I'm going to do green, let's say, and, uh, and so on and so forth there. So I'll do one more. I'll do a yellow for two. Okay, and so that one's now done. And then, of course, on my, uh, my uh, LED, I'm going to bind it to indirect tag, and I'm going to use the amps. So I'm going to go down to my motors, grab one of the motors, get the amps tag there, and I'm going to, again, replace the M1 with the motor name parameter of the template. So I'm going to go to press OK, and now the template's ready to go. So if I go to a window, I can use that template on the window. So I can simply just take drag motor on. And right now, it's not going to point to anything because the motor name here is empty. I need to put that name to match one of the folders I have over here because it very much knows about that structure. So if I put M1, I can see now it pointing to M1. Now I can have put multis on, multiple, multiple of these on the window. I put M2 and, uh, and so on and so forth. I can put M3, and it's going to point to the different ones that we have over here. Again, the great thing is if I want to make a change, add something new, like if I want to go here and add to the left-hand side of the LED, 
a little label that says AMPS, so I know what it is. I go back to my screen, and you can see all of them have updated for me automatically. And so making templates indirect like that allows us to point to really anything we have in our tag database, and you can make things uh, very generic in that way.